I am a doll artist with 20 years of experience. There have been plenty of exhibitions, collections, orders, students, as well as the techniques in which I have worked. The world of dolls is fascinating but closed. With a rich history, it's somewhere full of love and somewhere full of creepiness. I feel I have shared with you the details of my craft, and I also have a lot to say about the history of art doll culture. It just so happens that my workshop is now in Barcelona. The relationship with the city developed as between two persons. The Gothic Quarter welcomed me at first frightened and dazed, too close and extremely loud. That's how my first doll turned out a Gothic Quarter feeling. I started her in a previous life and had planned a very different image, but she decided to change dramatically. The dolls know for themselves better what they are going to be. She gives rise a collection uh, named Barcelonases. These dolls uh, will be expressions of the spirit of the city and my impressions of it, character associations related to the history of the city and the architecture and everything I meet here. I still haven't a name for her. Maybe you can suggest one in the comments. It's funny, the doll already has an owner, but still no name. And don't forget to subscribe. It is very important for me to see your feedback in order to keep shooting. So, press like and subscribe buttons, please. I'll tell you a little later about my doll, about the collection and about the process of creation. But first, let's immerse ourselves in the atmosphere of vintage dolls. Did you know that in the early 1800s it was fashionable to give dolls the names of famous historical figures? That's right, parents would buy dolls for their children and name them after famous people, like Napoleon Bonaparte, Julius Caesar and even George Washington. Oh, here is another funny story. The ideal toy company operated from 1907 to 1997. During the post-World War II baby boom era, Ideal became the largest doll-making company in the United States. One of the strongest brands was the Shirley Dolls, which were produced in the 1930s and 1940s. These dolls were based on the popular child star Shirley Temple, who appeared in a number of films during the 1930s. The Shirley Temple doll shops were designed to be like small doll museums, showcasing a vast array of dolls and doll accessories. The shops were usually decorated in pink and white, with murals depicting Shirley Temple in various poses and costumes the dolls were displayed in glass cases and on shelves with different sizes and outfits available for purchase. It became very successful, and many children wanted to own a Shirley doll. The problem was the company only made white dolls, and uh, children of color were left out. One day, in the 1950s, a little dark-skinned girl walked into Shirley Temple doll shop looking for a doll that looked like her. She walked up and down the shelves, but none of the dolls looked like her. The girl became upset and her mother asked the shop assistant if they had any dolls with darker skin tones. The shop assistant replied that they did not and that the only dolls they had were the ones on display. As the little girl and her mother were leaving the shop, they bumped into Yolanta Bella, who happened to be passing by. Yolanta noticed the little girl's distress and asked her what was wrong. The girl explained that she couldn't find a doll that looked like her, and she felt left out. Yolanta felt a deep empathy for the little girl and decided to do something about it. 
she began creating dolls with darker skin tones and soon her dolls became popular all over the world. She even created dolls representing uh, different cultures and races so that children of all backgrounds could find a doll that looked like them. Yolanta Bella was born in Cuba in making dolls out of rags and scraps of fabric. As a girl who grew up in the USSR, I can understand her pretty well. Children in the socialist camp played with improvised objects more often than with real toys. She honed her skills over time, creating more sophisticated dolls as she grew older. However, it was not until later in life that she turned her hobby into a full-time career. She moved to New York City in the 1960s and began working as a designer for the Ideal Toy Company the same company that has been making Shirley dolls since uh, the late 30s. She also worked with galleries and various doll companies, uh, including the Ashton Drake Galleries and the Franklin Mint. Afterwards, she opened her own company, Yolanda Bella Dolls, in 1976. The pivot of her success was the Little Children of the World collection, which featured dolls dressed uh, in traditional costumes from countries all over the globe, uh, became particularly popular and helped to pave the way for more diverse uh, and inclusive toy industry. Years later, the little girl, who was upset in the Shirley Temple doll shop, was reunited with Yolanta Bella. She thanked Yolanta for creating dolls that represented her and for making her feel included. The two shared in a special moment, and Yolanta knew that her work as a doll artist was making a difference in the world. It's stories like this that inspire me now. As an artisan, over the years I have done almost everything I can think of. I have won awards exhibited on the main stands of international exhibition, traveled with masterclasses. Uh, dolls were ordered as a present for famous people. Almost all of my dolls were one of a kind and even cast uh, from porcelain, each one represented a new character. Now I realize that I could have done more and could say something louder. Overall, well, I'll be winding it up. I'm going to make a white doll collection dedicated to Barcelona, made in several techniques at the same time. I will explain the technology and history of porcelain and eventually show all stages of creation, from the master model to casting, firing and painting. I will tell you about polymer clay using my own example. I will show you step by step how to make your own doll. I'll make the molds and you'll see how several of my students use them to make their own versions. And you'll be able to compare how different the characters of the dolls are, even though they are all made from the same molds. Also, I will make a series in resin as a souvenir. I'll tell you how serious production of dolls works. Long time ago, I was afraid to work with molds, afraid the images would be dispersed. But after teaching a lot of students, I realized how different the dolls were. But now it's time to put my experience together and tell you about it. I haven't come across anyone who speaks beautifully about dolls, but I know a lot of people who live in this world. So let me now give you a brief history of articulate dolls, starting with the materials. But before it, let's see what I have here. And here is what I have got. I will make a master model in plasticine according to all the rules of sculpture. I will take two types of molds of fur. The first will be in silicone for, uh, for a series of polymer clay dolls. The others are gypsum molds. 
especially for porcelain uh, casting. The porcelain shrinks a lot when fired, which changes the character of the dolls. Then there is uh, the so-called liquid clay, which doesn't shrink because it doesn't require firing. I will tell you about it separately. Every doll in this series uh, will be finished by hand, so all my dolls will be one of a kind. I used to not like working with sketches, but now I want to draw all the characters in as much details as possible, so that my students can help me during the creation of larger collections. You will see what the realization of the sketch looks like in the material. Subscribe to my page and you will become a participant in the creation of the doll. I need to understand that the topic is interesting. Please subscribe to the channel and Instagram too. I have a practice of teaching and private courses, link in the description, uh, but here I will tell the most common mistakes of students to show the author's know-how as well as live streams with answers to your questions. Information on free webinars will be appear later on here. The links are in the description. Porcelain is a type of ceramic material that it is fired at high temperatures to create a hard, translucent and non-porous surface. It has been highly valued for centuries for its beauty and durability and it is still used today in a wide range of applications, from the fine art to household items. The invention of porcelain is often attributed to two different places – China and Europe. In China, porcelain was first made during the Tang dynasty uh, 618-907 AD. Chinese porcelain was highly prized for its beauty and was exported around the world. Chinese porcelain was made by combining kaolin, a type of white clay, uh, with feldspar and other minerals, and then firing the mixture at extremely high temperatures. The resulting material was uh, hard and translucent, uh, with a white or uh, blue-white color. In Europe, porcelain was first developed in the early 18th century in Germany. A man named John Frederick Bodke was attempting to create gold using alchemy, but instead uh, discovered a way to make porcelain. Bodge's porcelain was made by combining kaolin with feldspar and quartz, and then firing the mixture at high temperatures. The resulting material was similar to Chinese porcelain, but with a slightly different uh, composition and color. While both Chinese and European porcelain were made using similar techniques and materials, there are some differences in their composition and appearance. Chinese porcelain is often whiter and more translucent than European porcelain, while European porcelain can have a more creamy or yellowish tint. Nonetheless, both types of porcelain uh, have played an important role in the development of art and technology and they continue to be highly valued today. The first porcelain dolls were made in Europe in the mid-18th century. These dolls were called Poppy de Biscuit in French, which means biscuit dolls. They were made using a type of porcelain known as biscuit porcelain, which is unglazed and has a matte finish. The first porcelain dolls were made in Germany and France and they were designed to look like adults rather than children. They were typically dressed in the latest fashions and were highly prized by collectors. The first porcelain dolls were often made by hand and uh, they were very expensive. They were sold in exclusive shops and were only affordable to the wealthy. Over time, manufacturing techniques improved and porcelain dolls became more affordable and accessible to a wider audience. In the late 19th century, porcelain dolls became popular in the United States. 
They were often mass-produced and sold in department stores, making them more affordable to the general public. Many American doll makers also began to produce dolls that looked like children, which became very popular. I know from my own experience that today porcelain dolls are still highly valued by collectors and they continue to be made by skilled artisans using traditional techniques. While they may not be as popular as they once were, porcelain dolls remain an important part of the history and dolls and uh, a testament to the beauty and durability of porcelain as a material. In conclusion, I want to ask you uh, to subscribe to my channel and my Instagram and press like.